will you please give a very, very warm welcome to the Chief Executive of Tesco, Sir Terry Leahy. Napoleon described Britain as a nation of shopkeepers. Of course, he didn't mean that as a compliment. Uh, but in our perfidious uh, way, we uh, took him at his word and uh, actually did develop a very, very uh, famous industry in shopkeeping. When I joined the board of Tesco in uh, 1992, the world's most profitable retailer was Marks and Spencer. They were just about to be overtaken by Walmart, if I remember. Uh, and the world's most profitable food retailer was, uh, was Sainsbury. And I think we've got their market cap uh, at that time. Actually, coincidentally, <clears throat> they were valued on the market at about the same amount. So where was Tesco uh, then? Well, Tesco actually was struggling. Um, we were hit hard by the recession of the early 90s, and uh, it was, our predicament was summed up uh, by the Times newspaper, who rather cruelly <laughs> summarized our fate as, uh, by saying, if you want quality, shop at uh, Sainsbury. If you want price, shop at a discounter. Uh, Tesco's stuck in the middle. Who needs to shop there? We were about half the value of uh, Marks and, and Sainsbury, and uh, people thought that the way f for Tesco in the future would be down rather than up. Well, well what, what happened? Let's, let's roll it forward. This is the market capitalization today of uh, Sainsbury and Marks. Not much difference, uh, Sainsbury a little bit larger, and this is, Sains uh, this is Tesco's market capitalization. So, um, not what people would have predicted. And um, it, it actually is one of the most remarkable uh, turnarounds in British uh, business history. And that's what I want to talk to you about uh, today. Uh, the management lessons that, 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 that I have learned uh, in that uh, transformation. Tell us a little bit more about what it was like growing up in Liverpool in the 60s and early 70s. Um, yeah, it was, uh, the 60s were a very exciting uh, time for Liverpool. It, you, you may remember it was the Mersey Beat, and um, uh, you know the Beatles and lots of other bands, Jerry and the Pacemakers, and uh, everybody, uh, every young uh, person, you know, in every street was in a band. So that was an amazing uh, time. Um, Did you want to be in a band? Uh, no. <laughs> and. Um, the, I was a, a, a little young then, you know, I was uh, uh, not quite ready for that. And um, we lived in prefabs, which had been built. These were factory temporary housing that was, was built uh, after the bombing in the, in the war. And uh, my parents uh, are Irish, and uh, my mum was a nurse. And my dad, uh, who'd been badly injured in the war, was, a, uh, was a, an itinerant greyhound trainer and uh, gambler and uh, they were very loving parents and uh, you know that's a that's a great gift to take with you because I think you know if you've been loved then then it's much easier to work with people and uh, you know as I said earlier trust is the basis of effective relationships and it's much easier to trust people if you're if you're secure so I was lucky in uh, in that sense uh, can you tell us about how the club card concept first came about? It was a first in grocery retailing and a particularly brave initiative. Now, when um, the, the, the computing technology, the cost of computing technology started to come down, you, you, you could produce a card, you could scan a customer, you, you could hold uh, information uh, about their purchases. And um, so, you know, I suggested that, that we do this and, and we incentivize people to hold this card uh, by giving them a discount, a thank you. Because we didn't actually know who our customers were. And, and some people would be spending, I don't know, thousands of pounds a year with us and we didn't even know who they were. So we wanted to know who they were and say thank you for shopping with us. The, the, the conventional wisdom was that <clears throat> this 1%, which at the time was about 20% of our entire profits, would be a zero-sum game. If everybody in the industry had it, then everybody would just lose 20% of their profits. So, so there was a lot of industry 
skepticism uh, about it. But we, we had trialed it, and customers loved it. They really liked it. And uh, it's back to that thing about follow the customers. And uh, you know, that if they love it, if they like it, then, then you've got to work out a way of, um, of doing it and, uh, and making money out of it. And, and so that's what we did. And at the time that Club Card was launched, it was actually being trialed by a number of competitors. Uh, but Tesco took that extra risk, and it's back to that thing, you know, that, that uh, you can take risk in business. So it's not about market share, uh, it's not about profits or growth or our line of business or what kind of stores we operate. It, it, it's about the relationship of trust that you build between yourselves and the customers by doing things for customers and what you hope to get in return if you do it well enough for long enough. About 15 years ago, we got all of the people who worked in Tesco uh, in small groups. It took a year. And uh, people on the shop floor, people on the checkouts, people running departments. Uh, and we got them in, we just asked them two things. The first question was, look, you've worked in Tesco a long time, you know Tesco better than anybody. What do you think Tesco stands for? And they said, well, we think Tesco tries harder for customers than, than anyone. And that became our first value. And we said, and what would you like Tesco to stand for? And they said, well, we'd like it to be a place um, where you treat people the way you would like to be treated. A place where you treat people the way you would like to be treated. And these, of course, and that became our second value. And these are universal values. That's the golden rule. Build a business around the customer and motivate staff on the basis of simple decency and respect. And they actually uh, became our values. They have been really the secret of our success because it keeps the business and everybody in the business focused on the right priorities, which is how do you make life better for customers. And it gives people the secret recipe for doing that, which is to motivate uh, everybody in the business by treating them with common decency.